grandmother in Japanese. Customer retention strategy to supersize your business. Sharon Horn Nelson here. And I'm going to talk about the customer retention strategy today. But first, I'm going to break down, in case you haven't noticed, the strategy I have for strategies that I implement in my business and the business of the clients and the customers and the businesses that I work with. It's really simple. You probably can't see it, but I'm going to try to share it. Basically, every strategy. First step, what and why. What's the strategy? What's in it for me to implement it in my business? Why would I want to do that? And how can, that'll be the, that'll be my last step. What and why? What is it? Why do I want to use it? If there's not a great reason to use it or if it's cost in, you know, prohibitive, I'm not going to do it in my business or in anybody else's businesses. The benefits have to outweigh the cost of doing something or we don't do it in our business. It's as simple as that. Second step is the process that we use, the process to use the strategy. And it's always between one and five steps. And I'll demonstrate it with this as I'm showing you this strategy today. So what and why, what's the process, one to five steps to implement it. It can always be that simple. And finally, my last step is always continuous improvement. And then I'm going to add continuous improvement. And part of that is, is there a way to automate this process? Is there a way to automate it and build it into our processes and systems so that we do it without having to use extra energy, extra resources, et cetera? Is there something that we're already doing we can attach it to, which is continuous improvement, right? We're always evaluating and saying, is this working the way we want it to? If not, what do we need to tweak and test? Otherwise, uh, how, how can we automate it to make it simple so that we do it and we have the data available when we need it to make decisions and to run our business better so that we can supersize it? So with respect to customer retention, what the heck is a customer retention strategy and why do we want it? It means that we have customers that buy from us more than once. Now, I don't know about you, but I love repeat customers. Why? First and foremost, they already have had our product and service. They've already done business with us. It doesn't cost us usually hardly anything to get them to buy something else or to have them repeat and buy from us again because they already have had a great experience with us. I'm assuming this, of course. And they know, like, and trust us, etc. cetera. Uh, retaining customers is far less expensive, and there's all kinds of statistics about this, than going out and getting new customers and dealing with our lead flow and dealing with leads and finding new clients and prospecting and advertising and creating online content and all these things. It's a lot easier to deal with the people that you have and treat them really, really well so they become lifelong customers and advocates and repeat customers of your business than it is to always be going out and finding new people. Now, some businesses, some industries are built on constant leads, constant flow of different traffic and different people coming into them because they have a one-off product or service. But I contend in those businesses as well, there is always a way to provide more products and services to the customers that you already have than it is to always be churning and turning and having to find new people. You get on that hamster wheel and you feel like you can never get off. So how do we go about doing this? Let me demonstrate this with four steps of applying a customer retention process. Number one, craft a personalized experience. Understand and know, and we're doing this for other strategies as well, so why not have it crafted with customer retention in mind? Uh, make sure that the experience based on data and information, and if we're not using information and data to run our business, we're in trouble. Uh, there's so much information available now. We can use it to understand what makes people buy, what makes them buy more, what helps them solve their problem, what works, what doesn't work, what of our products and services need to be improved, tweaked, simplified. I find the vast majority of the time, our products are so complicated and so overwhelming that they scare people away, or our services are. Usually our services aren't. It's just how we explain it. But <clears throat> there's this overcomplication of things that's kind of mind-blowing in this information age that we're living in. And it's not even an information age anymore. It's a knowledge. It's an attention age that we're living in. We are all vying for people's attention because everybody only has 24 hours in a day. And what they're going to prioritize and pay attention to, you're hoping, is your business. But in a lot of instances, it probably isn't their number one priority. Uh, the second thing, the second part of the process, after we customize the experience for uh, and personalize the experience for the people that we want to retain. Because guess what? Some people find us. Some people use our products and services. And they aren't our ideal clients. Until we get really good at filtering people out 
and making sure our messages are right on for the people we want to work with and they scare away the people we don't want to work with, we're still going to get a few that trickle in. And so we want to craft our experiences and craft our offers so that they encourage repeat customers for ideal customers and ideal clients, but they maybe filter out some of the less than ideal clients. Uh, second, we want to build trust through authenticity, through transparency in our communications, in our pricing, in our policies. We want to make sure people know what our policies are, what our pricing is and how we came about it and with our communication. Third, we want to deliver exceptional customer service. Not just what people expect, but more than they expect. Why? Because it's a way to distinguish ourselves and put ourselves above any type of competition or anybody else that might be drawing our ideal client's attention to different things. And it makes our products and services a higher priority for them because they know that we are delivering and meeting their needs, listening to their concerns, and acting accordingly. Fourth, we're going to incentivize uh, loyalty. People that stick with us longer get special treatment. They get rewards. They get bonuses. They get surprise gifts and things because we want them to know how much we appreciate their business. It makes them feel important. It gives them the VIP special treatment, and they're more likely to stick with us and engage with us and stay with us longer. And then finally, of course, is my continuous improvement step. We're always going to be looking at what we've put in place, measuring, having key performance indicators, looking at the key things that matter, especially customer feedback and customer input. Now, a, a repeat customer input, right? Because that's who we're targeting. People that have, have bought more than once from us. Uh, because so often, again, like I mentioned, the the businesses all, and percentage-wise of businesses out there are more concerned with getting a lot of people in than with keeping them. Think of, and I'm going to share a couple of ex examples of, of companies that do this really, really well. And I actually am in, in two of them. And then two that I have relatives and, and family in, but I don't participate in them. One is Apple. I love Apple. I, I like Apple, but I am a PC and Android user. I have been, and I'm old, and I don't want to change right now. And I know that there's a cartoon going around about uh, there's nothing more stubborn than an Android user who won't go to Apple. I'm sure Apple promoted that that GIF but uh, or GIF, whatever you call it, uh, <clears throat> but I still choose not to participate. And then Zappos, my niece uh, loves Zappos because she is a shoe person, a shoeaholic, I like to call her, and my mom. And they love Zappos because they have such incredible customer service. They have free returns and everything else. So if you get a size that doesn't fit, you return it and get the right size, things like that. <clears throat> and then the other two examples are Amazon, of course, Amazon Prime, customizes, makes recommendations, rewards you <clears throat> by offering different services and streaming services, free and things on their site. Uh, just for being an Amazon Prime me member. I think I've been on Amazon Prime for, I don't know, for a decade plus, however long they've been around. And <clears throat> I was one of the very early people that joined Amazon Prime because I did a lot of uh, Amazon for several of my businesses. And I didn't even, I never took advantage until probably this last year of Prime Video and, and things. I still don't do Prime Audio, but Prime Video, do watch it every once in a while. Thank you to the chosen. Okay, and then Starbucks is the other example. And I do have a Starbucks rewards card. I'm not a huge Starbucks fan. You know, people like different tastes and it's got a weird aftertaste. But they do have a couple of, of uh, products and services that I love. So I like being part of the rewards plan. Uh, oh, I don't remember what my whole point of this was. So, strategy. Are you, do you have some sort of customer retention built into your strategies and into your business processes to grow and build and supersize your business. If you don't, I'm going to highly recommend that you build them in again because our lifelong customers, and if you don't track the lifelong value of the customer, I think that's an exercise that everyone should go through so they realize how much you're leaving on the table by not concentrating on and focusing on getting people to buy from you repeatedly versus always having to bring in and churn new customers and new leads. All right, that's it. Love to hear your take on this particular strategy. Have an awesome day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.